in the organization, which was founded by Monsignor Patrick Anthony, um, came together about 26 years ago to really and truly preserve and promote the cultural heritage of the country and our Creole language. Um, there was a realization that they were very marginalized people in St. Lucia, marginalized mainly because of the language, the fact that they did not speak English and with them was dying a very rich cultural heritage. So basically what, what the aim of the Folk Research Center was to ensure not only that these um, folks got a voice, but basically that their language would be understood and appreciated and developed to that point, and also that the cultural heritage which surrounds their entire existence would be preserved as um, something which is truly valuable to St. Lucia. We started very much in the early days going down to all the corners of St. Lucia researching cultural practices that we didn't even know we had in St. Lucia. We did not, not know that they formed part of us. And, we, and in so doing, we discovered um, St. Lucians, people and communities and life, the life that um, gave birth to us uh, as we are now. And we began seeing things that we had not been taught in our education and developing a pride and a joy in all of those discoveries and wanting everybody else to know it and beginning to understand the importance of such knowledge in our future development. The Folk Research Center work right now is organized around programs in the main. We have we had many program areas which we collapsed in, a few years ago into two major program areas. That's culture and education in which we bring culture and education to the formal school system and to communities. And we stimulate culture and, and cultural activity within, the, uh, within that program area. And language development, where we focus on the, on the Creole language in particular. But our central work has always been around research, analysis, documentation, analysis, and popular dissemination of information on our folk culture. God save our grace. Folk Research Center, or, or this institution, or as I was saying, I mean, that was more or less my launching pad in the arts, really. That's where I really started, you know, all this acting thing. In fact, what I was doing is identifying these things out there and seeing how I could adapt it to stage because a lot of these things was functioning in the community. So it was then my way of, of representing, you know, um, some of these, these, these things that was dying, some of the arts that was dying within the community. I mean, making it come alive on stage. So a lot of my work, if you look at some of my work, I have a lot of influence on a lot of our traditions, you know, I mean, storytelling, bit my, you know, the way I um, direct the play, even my acting style is, is very much a solution acting style. People are not aware of that, but it's things, you know, I watch old men, I watch, you know, I mean, community, commu um, the storytellers within the community telling stories and, and the way they carry themselves, their posture, you know, I mean, I learn a lot from these people. We recognize that a lot of um, forms are being changed, a lot of cultural expressions and cultural traditions are dying and we think it's so important for us to preserve in a way that next, the, the, the future generations can experience it as closely as possible. The Junek Creole falls within our language development program area. It started off as a focus on our language to try and get us to understand our language and appreciate it a lot more. But then, very quickly, when we got into Junior Creole, we realized that you cannot divorce language from the realities of the society itself. Okay, so the focus on Junior Creole, which started off as a focus on language, became a focus on our people and our Creole traditions. We persevered despite all, and we developed skills and knowledge and experience in areas where a lot of our governments were not paying attention to. And when development came upon us and we were calling for you know, experience and skills in areas like language development, our, our, Creole, uh, our Creole language, some of the cultural forms in folk arts and so, um, we would have been found wanting if the Folk Research Centre had not persevered in some of these areas. 
So we reach a point where government and government work can the work of the education ministry and cultural department could not ignore the tremendous experience and the resources that the Pokusei Center had, had, had developed. And you find in the last few years, we have been getting lots of support. We cannot exist without the culture. I mean, people ignoring it, but it's something that you cannot ignore. Well, even if you try to ignore it, it will be there confronting you every time. So I'm seeing that, look, this, this work will just continue. You know, it will just continue because we haven't got a choice. And some of us, eh, some of us are gifted to do that kind of work. We can't do nothing else. So as long as we are alive, that's what we will continue to do. You know, that's what the Folk Research Center will continue to do. That's what I will continue to do. That's what other cultural activists in this country will continue to do. The satisfaction one has working at Folk Research Center is that you are forced to become a cultural activist. You are forced to understand yourself. You are forced to understand and respect people, respect language, respect cultural forms, respect indigenous habits, etc. And that's one, to me, that's one of my greatest satisfactions working here. I understand my culture better. I understand my people better. I understand my history better. Um, and it makes you become almost a mouthpiece. It forces you to become a mouthpiece for the culture of, of, of St. Lucia and, and for the history of St. Lucia. I can say with confidence that we have contributed quite a bit to that change and development in attitude of St. Lucians and pride towards ourselves, our riches, our resources, our land, our culture. Okay? And that is a very, very, very significant um, achievement of the Folk Research Center. We haven't stopped, we've continued, we are continuing now, we are facing a new century lots of new challenges. What we are hoping to do throughout the next millennium is to ensure that we keep abreast with technology, we use it so that um, we can make the best of it to ensure that our work get our the information we have gets disseminated and that people become more and more aware. Also we um, we are trying in terms of language development to ensure that there is government support and government policy and we were basically assured that by the Prime Minister and we are working right now on a program to present to him so that um, we can know what the next step is um, for the language in St. Lucia in terms basically of the orthography which is the writing of the language and we are going to be pushing in that direction and to basically see that the language is respected, taught and respected as a language, it is understood, so that we have people in St. Lucia who are not only bilingual, but who also are able to write the language and therefore assign the language its place in this country.